just, uh, just double checking on that. And remember, we are circulating cards, so you can write down questions for any of our speakers. I hope you'll start doing those because when we uh, finish with two more presentations, we're going to move right into questions and answers. So you've seen the overview uh, of the issue from Zach, and now I'm going to ask for, uh, for Representative Ken Helm to come up and talk to you about the specific legislation and where things appear to be going in the next five weeks. Ken. Well, it's nice to be with you tonight. Uh, I represent House District 34, which is in Beaverton, uh, a little ways away. But I was happy to come and visit with you folks tonight and tell you about the, uh, the two bills that we've got going. Um, I'm happy to be here tonight right after one of the biggest industries in our state signed on in support of the Clean Energy Jobs Bills, and that is uh, the worldwide company that is headquartered in my district, and that would be Nike. So we've got, you know, Zach was telling you, Zach was explaining that there's broad support here um, for the principle of placing a, a price on carbon so that our businesses can react to that rationally in a stepwise fashion and plan for the future in that way. And it's, uh, it's, it includes the very largest companies in our state. Uh, I'm really proud that Nike, one of my constituents, decided to sign up. The, there are, I'll do a, just a brief overview and then I'll, I, I'd be happy to answer questions because I, I think folks I know the overview that was sent to me of what uh, tonight was going to be about included a very nice summary of some of the high points of the bill. And as I read through that, I thought, my gosh, I, I probably don't need to explain everything over again. Um, so I'm happy to answer some questions. But uh, let me tell you where these bills are right now uh, and how they got where they are. We have two bills. One's a House bill. That's my personal bill. Um, and right now we have 22 House members signed on as co-sponsors and nine senators. That's not too bad. That is a lot of folks um, saying from the get-go that we believe in the principle and we have faith that the legislature can go ahead and figure out the final details through the five weeks of the 2018 session. Uh, the version of uh, the bill in the Senate is a committee bill. And my, my analog in the Senate is Senator Michael Dembro. He is the chair of the uh, Environment and Natural Resources Committee. And he and I have been working very, very closely over the past year to get these two bills in the shape that they're in. Uh, they are slightly different, and there will be a set of amendments to the Senate bill that will make them even more, more different. But the fundamentals remain the same. We place a cap on carbon. And by 2050, the goal is to be at 80% below 1990 levels for our state. So that gives us some time to get to what is a, uh, an ambitious goal. But it's a goal that is in line with other countries that are concerned with global climate change and have already pledged to do something. One of the things that I often hear is, Really, little old Oregon is going to step up kind of on the world stage and, and do something? Aren't we too small? And the, num the argument that comes with that is that, gosh, Oregon only produces maybe 0.4%, 0.4%, so less than half a percent of global carbon emissions. That sounds pretty small. But guess what? When you stack up the other countries, not other states, the other countries in the world that, are, that have signed the Paris Accords to do something about climate change, our amount of emissions rates at 120. There are 120 other countries that are less than our emissions here in Oregon. So yes, we are a global actor. And yes, it does matter. And it matters even more when we combine 
efforts with like-minded states and provinces here in North America to work together on the problem. So that's why we've developed bills that will allow us to link to what is called the Western Climate Initiative. And California, Quebec, and Ontario are now part of that coalition. Um, California's been doing this the longest. Quebec came in close second. The good news there is they've been, they have had a cap and trade program for many years now. And during that time period, their carbon emissions, their greenhouse gas emissions, have gone down predictably according to their cap, and their economies have grown. There's no correlation that we can find between uh, limiting our economy and reducing carbon emissions. In fact, it looks like the reverse is true, that there is more money to go around when we put a price on carbon and, make, and ask companies to please act rationally about their emissions. In order to, in order to uh, execute a, a program in Oregon, we've done a couple of things that are different um, than California. When California adopted their program, they, the le state legislature sort of handed the whole thing over to their predominant uh, state agency and, they, uh, and asked that that state agency conceive of a new board that would oversee the program and that that new board would develop rules at an administrative level to develop a cap and trade system. They went off and did that, and California just reauthorized that program in December. We don't need to reinvent that wheel. That set up a, a carbon trading program uh, that, the, that the California, Quebec, and Ontario have utilized, um, and our program is designed to link with that so that we can take advantage of the carbon trading system. It doesn't mean that our program is a, a rubber stamp of California's. That's far from the truth. Um, one thing we learned from, the, from watching California is um, that the legislature needs to keep a close tab on what goes on. And so one of the fundamentals of both bills is that we're going to create a joint committee, standing committee, a new committee at the legislature on climate. It will be a bicameral, bipartisan committee, much like our transportation, our joint transportation committee. And the committee will be in charge of two things. First, it will be in charge of overseeing our Department of Environmental Quality, which will be the lead agency in charge of developing the rules that will guide the program. And, and there will be places in which we ask DEQ to come back and touch base with us on a regular basis so that we can adapt the program over time. Secondly, the committee will be in charge of, of uh, using our existing appropriation system for allocating the, any revenues that are derived by the program. Um, and those will go through our ways and means process, will be distributed to existing agencies um, to go to programs that decarbonize our economy, that promote carbon sequestration, um, and that uh, allow for adaptation and resilience across the state against climate change. With those broad overviews, why don't I go ahead and open it up for questions right now for a few minutes, and I think that may lead into other parts of this bill that people have specific questions about. Okay. okay. Yeah, why don't we do that for me? And then I can also be available for other questions as well. Do you have any contact with Rocky Mountain Institute for Planning Caps? Not directly. I don't recall that they.